emails of information I sent you. <laughs> Uh oh, no comment. <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> oh no. Silence is loudest. That was great, and that's something that um, my students, they should probably be asleep by now, but I hope if they are up that they were listening and got to hear that. Uh, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, this is Randy from uh, Onshore Japan. Uh, Hi, Randy. How's someone, it going? Uh, awesome. Pretty good. Yeah. Someone was wondering uh, how far away uh, are we from the wreck? Yeah, we're uh, we were so. checking out a, a large piece of debris that we think is the um, part of the the upper hangar deck. Uh, that that seems to have broken off. Mm -hmm. So we're heading back to the yeah. uh, to the site. We're about 50 meters away. I'm oh, okay. A, I'm at a 15 Great. meter so we're going, right uh, So we were at the bow section, right? Uh, we didn't we're quite make it there. We we veered off right to now. check this out. So it's a little bit more. Um, it, that mm -hmm. was in our sonar, but we're heading back, uh, looking at some debris in the in the middle, and we'll we'll be back is, at the main site. The debris. Uh, the other piece. In a little while. Okay, that's great. Uh, yeah. Some of our listeners in Japan were wondering, okay, we're, we're, we're at the wreck. <laughs> we're wondering, but okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you for asking. Move. I want to say 20 minutes, yeah, that was a while. Can I have another push, please? Hi, Randy. Um, nice to have you join us. Um, I was wondering if you could give just a brief introduction uh, for any viewers who maybe were not on here before um, when you were on the call and just tell a little bit about yourself, your work, and um, your role that you're playing in this collaboration. Hi, hello, this is uh, Randy uh, from Japan. My name is Randy Sasaki, and I'm a um, maritime archaeologist based in uh, Japan. And, well, my mom is American, so I'm part, part Japanese, part uh, American. So I'm uh, interested in this uh, project mm -hmm. and hope to find out more about the uh, wreck site. And, you know, as being uh, Japanese American, this is very uh, special. Have a very special meaning for this yeah. uh, research. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, it's a great opportunity for me to join this uh, expedition. I'm really uh, thankful for the uh, team to invite me for this. Mm. Awesome. Thank you, Randy. We're so glad that you're here and um, providing all of your insights. Um, Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
And you want to go full wide again, thanks. Just so our viewers are aware, we're having some dinner transitions here in the control van. So you might hear some new voices popping in and out um, during this four to eight watch. Okay. Nav, how's our move doing? We did a 60 meter move, right? Correct. Um, we are about 25 meters into that move. Okay. So not quite half, or almost halfway. Yep, thanks. And I did leave a waypoint for the possible torpedo site that Jim was interested in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I saw that, thanks. I'm gonna hand it back off to Derek. Thanks, Mia.
So we've got a little bit of debris uh, that we're looking at in the middle uh, between the main wreck and that uh, other piece of wreckage we were looking at. Um, so some small items. We're, we're about 50 meters away from getting back to the main wreck. We're hoping to get close to where we uh, left it, about amidships um, on the starboard side, and then we're gonna continue uh, heading back to the bow to take a look at that part of the wreck. Videos back on comms. All right. would be smaller. So we had a viewer question asking if the ROV is connected by a cable and if the cable um, is in danger of snagging on wreckages. So uh, the short answer to that is yes, the ROV is connected uh, to the ship by, uh, I believe it's ca they call it the 6-8 cable because it is um, 0.68 inches in diameter. And ROV team, you can connect, uh, correct me if I'm wrong with any of this. and. Um, it is potentially possible for the cable to snag. So that is why um, we take extra caution on wreck dives. Uh, there's a lot of overhangs. There could be things coming off the wreck. So um, our ROV pilot and navigator work closely together with um, all the different types of information they see on the screen, like sonar and different camera views to ensure that um, we try to avoid any potential entanglements um, on any pieces of wreckage. And uh, unlike when we're working with the ROV Hercules, um, instead of the cable coming out of the aft end of the uh, vehicle, the cable attached to Atlanta is attached directly to the top. 
and it doesn't really slack at all. It acts like a piston moving that Atlanta up and down in the water yeah. column. So, yep. It, uh, doesn't. It's not like it's just lying around and could get snagged. Yeah, thanks for that additional detail, Ed. Hans, is there a point you'd like to drop for this, what we're looking at here? Or do you want a note made of that? Yeah, we can drop a point and move on. Mike's gone to dinner. He'll be back shortly. Was this another DMP, Hans? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. You are ready for the midterm. <laughs> DMP, disarticulated metal piece? It, Did so I get <laughs> it sounds so much better in an acronym. <laughs> yeah. We had some uh, new viewers tuning, tuning in, asking if this is Akagi. So we actually have uh, moved on and started another dive, and we were several hours in, and we're looking at a different uh, Imperial Japanese Navy aircraft carrier, Kaga. Uh, so um, we've been kind of surveying the ship. Uh, we did. Uh, go around the sides and I believe eventually wanted to go down the midline of the ship and we're um, returning to the ship after looking at a, a chunk of debris that was off about a hundred meters to the starboard side if I believe correctly. Um, so we are now kind of moving Atalanta back towards the ship to uh, continue observations there. Um, Hans, for our viewers turning in, do you think you could summarize um, what we found with the large, uh, I guess, chunk of debris that was to the side? If that sure. helped inform anything? Sure, I can give it a shot. You know, in the, the sonar image that we had, we really couldn't tell what it was. But once we landed at the main wreck site of IJN Kaga, we really were surprised by the amount of structure above the lower decks that is no longer there at all, uh, pretty much all over. So major, major pieces of this ship are missing. And that includes the lower hangar, upper hangar, upper flight deck, probably includes the island or tower, as we call it. Um, that is a lot of material. Of course, the Kaga sustained incredible damage in the attack and the subsequent explosions that happened in the hangar um, from the aviation gas mixture and from uh, the ordnance there. So there is a lot of Kaga that is elsewhere and probably a long ways elsewhere because 
the kaga did not sink where she was attacked. She moved and then drifted during the night. So that's a little different from a kagi. More of a kagi is in one spot. And we saw a much more intact wreck there, even though there was much damage to the flight deck and hangar. So we didn't know what that large piece of debris was and structural element was off the starboard beam of Kaga and took the moment when we had the ROV on the Kaga's starboard side to make a turn and zip out there at flank speed for us. And by the way, you're witnessing flank speed right here on the video for us. Uh, we're doing a very slow and careful survey. And it turned out to be a very interesting section of the wreck. It, we, we really have come to sort of the conclusion, the consensus with our colleagues ashore, our co-investigators at the command center in Silver Spring, and different agencies, and the archaeologists and historians on the science chat with us, that that is a big part of the forward hangar of the vessel and possibly even elements of the flight deck, perhaps. So that was clearly recognizable and some of the large structural pillars that supported the extension of the flight deck. When they elongated the upper flight deck to the entire length of the vessel in, in 19, they completed in 1935, I think, rather than having it shorter as it was before. It had these massive pillars to support that at its elevated height. So that was really interesting to see and understand. And of course, as archeologists, we begin to wonder how that large section got there. And, you know, where did it separate itself from the wreck? And it may be that the attack damaged its structure, its support, but it was still remained on the vessel. There's a cylinder coming up on the right-hand side that has a concerning shape. Ah, Roger. Can we get a zoom on that before we get too close to it? Thank you, yeah. I don't think that's in our heading. That it's not in our direct path of movement right now. Uh, could just be machinery. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. We're open to suggestions from our shore it team of investigators as well. Squared on one end. I'm not yeah. as concerned about it as I first was. It does look like you can see um, sort of plow trails in the sediment where yep. things must have been moving at velocity through there. Yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, just to finish that thought, yeah. you know, we concern ourselves with how things got to where they are on the site as well as what they are. Thanks, Kara. So where do those, how do these uh, scars on the seafloor line up with our wreck and the other part? Uh, looks, looks to me like they're kind of moving in the direction towards the wreck or vice versa. Um, it doesn't seem to be a slope here, but. Yeah, that's an interesting pattern. So we're heading, uh, our heading right now is looking directly back towards the wreck. Yeah, and I see one, two, three, four, at least five of those. Huh. Well, maybe this, when it uh, hit the seafloor, stuff was ejected it's laterally. Almost what we see when there's trawl scars on the bottom, but I assume that wouldn't be here. Too not, deep. Not yep. step. Yeah. Nothing to fish for. Trawl for. <coughs> Sorry about the iris jumping. Let's see if I can fix that. Alright, I'm making some good headway at the moment. According to the USBL track. About 40 meters out 
from the side of the wreck that we're trying to get back to. Thank you, and we're moving in on that that uh, possible torpedo damage mark. That's the that's the uh, objective. We'll see if we can get see where we land on there. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know that I have an, an idea of what those track marks are. We're open to any suggestion with uh, of what those might be from our our shore team. seeing those on the port side of the vessel, do you? No. Does it look like it ends at this? Well, it's behind us here? as well. So it keeps going beyond that, huh? There's just, that's just one the or marks two. Marks may very well be biological. The marks on the seabed may be biological. And yeah, then, maybe. They're awfully straight. Uh, where was that deep one? Over here somewhere? There it is. So the the orientation of those appears to be directly between there's, the wreck and the debris. It seems like often on our horizon, there's a much bigger disturbance ridge like. Yeah, I see what you're saying, Ed. Not in frame. There it is. Now it's in frame. See how bright that up. Can't do much with this. Sorry. Sebastian, have you ever seen anything like this? These tracks? Yeah. I saw them when I was down on the lounge earlier. I have not seen anything bio-wise that big. Um, there could be whale marks, feeding marks, but they're very straight, which is what's catching me off guard. Yeah, they don't look like bee compressions. <laughs> yeah, so I'm wondering if maybe there was something that pushed those rocks, because there's like one rock in there already on the track. Maybe something was pushing the rocks, like maybe the impact pushed and them, but I'm not sure. These are the very one, artificial looking to me. The one most to our right, uh, the prominent one, looks to widen out just at the top of the frame. But there's still that ridge off to our right, which looks like it might be ending. So it looks like the deepest uh, sperm whale can dive is 2,250 oh, meters. I just, so it's out of the range of whales. Um, I'm wondering, given the size of the sort of crater around the wreck, if this is something that happened on impact? Could it have slid? Like if we were looking down slope, that would have a better argument. Yeah, we can, guys, we can move on from here. We are. It, yeah, they're, they're moving. Please. We're watching the range decrease on the sonar. Yeah, we can we can move on from here. Let's see if we can get the shipwreck in uh, in view. We have a ship move underway. We're still uh, 30 almost 40 meters out from the ship, so we're just waiting on the ship move. Watching a minute hand move. It's, yeah. It's getting there, but it's imperceptible. For a, I guess an hour hand, you know. Yeah. 30, 30 meters. 30 meters. Yeah, for viewers, we're we're underway. We can we can rotate and, and look at things, but we are underway and moving back towards the wreck. That's the speed of the ship moves.
even if we were to wait, or even if we were to make a ship move faster, it's the translation from the ship move down to the vehicle is what we're waiting on. Right. It really doesn't matter about the, the speed of the ship move. I don't want to put it in another one. I think we're going to get there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. So Hans, once we return to this ship, are we doing another survey down the midline? Or um, what is the plan for once we return to the ship? Uh, the plan is Mike's got the plan, Mike. <laughs> the plan is whatever Mike says. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're, um, we, we peeled off to go uh, look at this um, uh, piece of large debris that we're coming back from. Um, about midships in the, in the, uh, midships in the ship. Uh, in the wreck, uh, and as we were leaving, Dr. Delgado uh, chimed in that he thought we were looking at an area that there could have been torpedo damage. So we're we've dropped a point in uh, in high pack, and we're going to head back, pick that up, uh, and then continue on to to look at the bow. Okay, great. Thanks for that update. And sorry, I didn't mean to exclude you from the question before. I didn't realize uh, you came back from <laughs> <That's> dinner. <fine. laughs> And there was a question about um, who controls the underwater cameras. So uh, those cameras that we're looking at the image from right now, it's on the ROV remotely operated vehicle at Atlanta. And I believe, um, and ROV pilots, please step in and correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the camera is able to be controlled somewhat to um, look in different directions and zoom in, but um, Atalanta is designed to look kind of below because it's usually above Hercules and helping us keep a eye in the sky for Hercules. Yep, we can tilt up and down with the camera. We can also uh, rotate the vehicle left and right. Um, but we're kind of limited. We can't look up too far because of the orientation of our lights. Our lights are pointed mostly downwards. Um, because we're normally operating above Hercules, as you said. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, the lights are a factor, too. Well, 
Who you had up there? Ten meters per division. Yeah, that's ten meters per Thank division. You. About twenty-five meters from the rip. Go ahead, Bridge. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yep. They're just adjusting heading 15 degrees. 15 degrees, so that'll slow. Come into the wind. It might swing us back a little bit. Maybe five or ten meters. You mean as it's regaining? But as they're as they tilt, there, the basically with the A frame will also come around as they move their head in. So <clears throat> isn't the center of gravity? The center of rotations at the stern, though. Oh, they're moving yeah. around the stern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was just doing some quick, uh, I was trying to help people visualize the actual distances we're talking about when we translate motions down the cable. And um, if people are familiar with Burj Khalifa, it's, I believe it's still the tallest yes. building in the world. Um, basically the, the vehicle is about six and a half Burj Khalifas underneath the ship. Um, wow. So, so that's, if you picture dangling something from a cable that high, you can understand why it's, it takes some time to make these movements through the water. For most people, if you were visiting a city and you found a restaurant you wanted to visit and it was the distance apart that we are deep, you would say it's too far. <laughs> So according to our high pack um, pre-existing target that we've marked along the way, we should be coming in right very close to that, um, what you thought might be torpedo damage. Yeah, no, um, I was looking on high pack briefly and it looks like, uh, looks like you got pretty close, so that's pretty awesome. Jake, there's a diagonal object in the water column. I can mark it for you. What? Hold on, I'm just going to find it again. Oh yeah, it's I can like see right that. right there. Okay. Uh, so keep an eye on that. I can see the mound of sediment and the wreck should just be right past it. Yeah, it looks like it's going from lower left to upper right. What are you looking at? Uh, this cable or object in the water right there. All I see is the mound of sediment. Right in front. I think you're looking at the wreck. Yep. Uh, okay.
So as we approach um, sunset, I wanted to ask Malia to share a little bit about the cultural protocol that's about to take place here on EV Nautilus. Sure. Yeah. So um, we have been conducting cultural protocol actually since we left port. Mm -hmm. But tonight we are going to be doing a special um, ho'okupu. Uh, the Hawaiian word ho'okupu means to offer. Um, it's an offering of aloha of love, of remembrance, um, of honoring the over 3,000 um, airmen and sailors that were, uh, who tragically perished um, in this war. And um, as we've been going through these shipwrecks, you know, really that, that enormity and the tragedy of what occurred um, and so we wanted to honor those who have passed. And so we'll be doing a hula. Um, hula is a Hawaiian, um, it's really a way of life. And it is something that we kind of is like a living archive of the history, um, the values, the traditions, and the knowledge of um, Kanaka O'ivi, the native Hawaiian people and so through this hula, we'll be performing at 7 o'clock this evening. Um, we're just taking that moment to reverently thank Kanaloa, the god of the sea, um, to reverently honor those who have passed. And um, it is a Japanese song that we'll be performing, um, Okinawan group that sings it. And it's called Umi no Koi. And the title um, means the voice of the sea. And so as we dance this, um, this mele, this song, there's four women on board who will be dancing um, to just really honor the space, um, to honor the intentions, and to honor those, especially uh, the, the over 3,000 um, people who passed, um, you know, in this, in this monument of Papahanao Mokoakea. So we'll be doing that at seven o'clock this evening. Um, there is some very special significance of why we're doing it um, on this night. In the Hawaiian moon calendar, uh, tonight is a night of Kane. Um, it's the 27th night of the Hawaiian lunar calendar. The night of Kane was formerly one of the most hallowed nights of the Hawaiian calendar spiritually kapu it was associated with keau polohiva akane the dark clouds of kane it's also associated with death and it's also associated with hanau ho which is actually rebirth so if we think about the really significant time period we're in from a hawaiian perspective um this really is a time of um maluhi of solemnity of and we've all been feeling this, this heaviness, this kaumaha, um, you know, as we survey these um, wrecks. And so we offer this ho'okupu um, as a very pono way of, in a very Hawaiian way, of perpetuating our culture and um, honoring those that have passed. Thank you, Malia, for sharing that and preparing us um, for this protocol. And I also wanted to tell um, our back row, um, I spoke with Megan, and we can go out at 7 and join and watch on. I'm going to do another 10-meter move. Yep. Just going to do a 10-meter move, uh, bearing 225, try to get us closer. Seems like we're a little bit stalled right here. Bridge nav. I'd like to do a, a 10 meter move at bearing 225. Thank you.
you better able to see those two shapes that were drawing my eye. I think I just have a better monitor over here. We're facing our course over ground. Uh, not exactly. We need to rotate uh, to the right if you want to do that. Okay, that's fine. I didn't like seeing uh, this in this direction. I think we'll get some more information here in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, it's a very strange sediment pattern. The thing I was seeing earlier, uh, let me see if I pick it up here. It looks like it goes there and then that way. Yeah, the cable or a pipe or something. Shape. Pixel anomaly. Well, we certainly didn't see that on our way down, so we might be we might be further forward than we thought. Um, mm, not according to the USBL. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> hmm. So, as we heave, what I'm seeing past that shape is moving in relation to the shape, which tells me that's in the water column. The line. Yes. It's not staying equally distant from other nearby points when we move up and down. And I mean, that's the wreck right there. We're only 30 meters from it. No, we're only we're not. We're, we're not, like we're like 18 meters from it. Our heading's not looking directly at the wreck at the moment. No, understood. Right. Yeah. And there's another one further off to starboard. And it's just weird that this lines up. I wonder if it was dragging something with those. Okay. Well, maybe it's good that we came out, out on this side of it. Like I said, there's one more to your right. Uh, directly off to the right uh, there? Right in there somewhere. That. Yeah. Oh, it might. I mean, it looks like that these... That doesn't look like that's in the water column. The other no, one th does. These are, these are probably just uh, lines coming off the wreck. Yeah, they're just suspended from the edge of the crater to the ship. Well, I think from the ship to the edge of the crater. <laughs> well, either or. Suspended, so, both sides. I mean, given the 
the force that must have taken to create that crater, I, my theory is that those striations in the sediment are some sort of like debris blasting away from it and leaving a trail. It just, I don't know what else would cause that striations directly orthogonal right. to the wreck. Yeah. So do we ever consider a trawl? Not this deep. Would lines like these be used for like a ship to tie up on the side to evacuate survivors or something? It looks steel, doesn't it? Well, uh, to most look at it. most of the survivors came off on destroyers that went up up and, and tied up alongside. I mean, there's plenty of line and cables and various other linear things on on ships, so I, especially ones of this size, so I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there were random cables lying at the edge of a wreck. That's that's why we do a, a perimeter survey before we do other stuff to, to see what hazards are for the ROV. Such as these. Some of those are degaussing cables. <laughs> I'm sure. He's putting or, it out there. Or ladders. Or ladders, of course, or paint cans. <laughs> Some of the more ironic items we found on shipwreck sites, 19th century shipwreck sites, on the, the shoals and the, the reefs are the sounding leads that the sailors would swing to sound the bottom when they were afraid they were getting too close to the reef, and indeed they were. Uh, John's mentioning that uh, they didn't actually tie up to get survivors. The survivors jumped into the water and they uh, pulled them up with nets and lines from the water with the destroyers. Wow. Probably because it was, yeah, it was t too hot to tie up, but they were burning. That was Yorktown that was able to get them off with the destroyers alongside. That's a pretty vivid image. Do we want to move to the right, uh, get away from that cable and proceed towards the bow? Yeah, that, that's the direction of the point that uh, we dropped in, right? Where we want to go? Yeah. I'm just surprised that we, we must have gone over this. I'm just surprised we didn't see it. It is odd. But I don't know how yeah. to explain it. Because also, we were kind of following this line in the sediment out. Anyway, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll just go to the right. It and looks... We'll pick it up. Yeah, it looks like that was the... We're in the area where that kind of jog was taken to the southwest so you might have actually been kind of inward on the wreck when you were in this area oh that's right we kind of gone around it yeah we were kind of um yeah that's a good point we were kind of over the wreck for quite a bit so we probably missed these so i think if we navigate to the right um yeah on a bearing of like i don't, don't want to say yeah, R Russ brings that up too. We're higher in the water and over the wreck. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah. Facing south, pretty squared up. Yeah, thinking like. So maybe like bearing of like 300, 300. Zero zero. Yeah. Let's try that. Uh, just maybe 10 meters. Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> Bridge nav. I'd like to do a ship move 10 meters bearing 300. Zero zero. Thank you.
So this point that we're headed to now, I think I heard you say it earlier, Mike, um, someone uh, noticed it and thinks it might be potential torpedo damage? Yeah. Oh, I think you're muted. That figures. There you go. Um, yeah, there was some uh, uh, broken hull plates. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll take a look at that again a little bit closer. So we have a viewer that's wondering about how big this uh, ship is. And aircraft carrier Kaga has a length of 247.65 meters, a beam of 32.5 meters, and a draft of 9.48 meters. And someone else was wondering uh, when this wreck was first located. And so in 1999, there is a joint expedition um, that went out and located uh, the ship, or I'm sorry, uh, in 1999, yes, it was located, and then 2019, there was a brief uh, dive that was done to confirm the find. Um, uh, it was, so uh, Nauticos in 1999 located part of the wreckage, part which we think, it. which we think is maybe where the initial attack took place, where, where some of the flight deck and Mm -hmm. and um, hangar deck uh, were blown off. And then that's some distance from here because the ship's drifted and under its own power for a little while. Um, and then it sank. Mm -hmm. And so in, in 2019, an AUV survey by Vulcan Inc. found the full part of the wreck here and then did a, did a short ROV dive on it. Nice. Thank you for that correction. And I don't think I was in here when we uh, saw the bow. What did the bow look like? We haven't seen it yet. Oh, we haven't seen I it yet. I wasn't in here either. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, heading there next.
another hypothesis would be that these cables are somehow related to those trenching features we saw. What do you guys think about trying to move laterally to the right? Uh, I don't feel like we're moving. Um, I think we, is it, oh, that's, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe move on a diagonal to the right and toward the wreck. Okay. Um, yeah, so. I'm thinking maybe 15. Bearing 315. Or maybe cut that angle closer. Two nine five. Two nine five. I think you want to be going more something more like two seven zero. I think. I think two nine five will bring us back. Because I'm facing this way. Yeah. Right. I'm facing two ten. That's right. With the ship, yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe. 270? Yeah, that'll bring us maybe closer and towards the bow, closer to the ship and towards the bow. Thank you. Yep. Uh, 15 meters? What sounds, do you think? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. Bridge nav. Can we please do a move? 15 meters bearing 270. Thank you. Hey, there it is right there. That's the torpedo damage. Just on that right. Wow. You guys nailed it. 
took a while, but we got there. <laughs> hey, that, yeah, that, that's awesome. Well yeah. done. Yep. Good job, Jake. Yeah, good. You okay with the zoom while we have this move on? Yep. Good zoom. <clears throat> Our current move should bring us closer to the damage. That's good. Perfect. Come in real quick, then I'll back back out. Okay, coming out. That's pretty much the exact spot, Mike. Yep. That's all Derek. It's always a team. <laughs> That's great. Jake, Jake set me steady on that last bearing. I appreciate that. That's, um, I was worried we weren't going to find it again. That's awesome. That's really exceptional navigating, guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We dropped a mark on this spot. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we did. That's right, to get back to it. I mean, we didn't want to do it entirely the hard way. Um, Derek, would you be able to get a measurement from when we were at the stern to where we are now? Sure. Yep. Just uh, stand by for a sec. Yep. When you have a chance. Try another push here, Jake. Yep. Go for it. Thanks. I'll try and darken yeah. it up and see if that... That'd be great to do. Although we'll see, you know, forward of this buckled hull plate, yeah. maybe there's even a, a larger impact area. We don't know yet. All right, thanks. So what did feel the place back? You know, that's falling away. So yeah. we're amidships, right? Yeah. Like that plate damage looks like what we Come saw on Coast Trader. Um, this other stuff where the plates come out, hard to say, but... Russ is asking if the deck has collapsed beyond that area of damage. <clears throat> Uh, can't quite tell right now. Yeah, and mm -hmm. what we're not seeing is what's below. Yeah, I thought I saw it collapse forward of this plate. Is that previous move complete? Not quite, okay. no. It looks like we're mm -hmm. about 150 meters from the stern of where we thought, where we lost the stern, basically, <laughs> to where we are now. Sorry, how many meters? Uh, about 148. Okay. Yeah. So we'd be forward of midships. 
Yeah. And uh, on the sonar scan from 2019, from the previous mission, looking down on it, on the starboard side forward of midships, you can see some large voids, dark spots, on top towards the, uh, the hull, close to where we are right now. Maybe, just maybe those coincide with the location where we're at. My guess is that we're kind of right under where the uh, tower was. I think that ship move is pretty much done at this point. Sorry, the, uh, the vehicle move. We might be getting pulled onto the wreck. All right, well, let's take a look. If we can drop down a bit so we can illuminate better that hole there, take a look at the deck planks. Yep. <coughs> good zoom here if you want to tilt up just a little bit. All right, tilting up. If you're comfortable with that altitude. Yeah. Go okay. Stand by. That's definitely torpedo and what it may be it may have done is this place is to catch and come off. Mm -hmm. That what you're seeing there with all of that gone and the way that's rolled up, that's all consistent with that Let me know if you want me, you want me to pan in any uh, direction. Ah. So right. see that? John just said this is directly under where the island is. Thanks. Yeah, no. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, right in there. Hold on. Yeah, I'll try and get this on up bounce. But there's either erosion or a defect down in there. Let me come out a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's erosion. I, I think it's from the impact. Um, there's not enough. Where current. that white area is, just when it's shaded now. Maybe we can come up. Yeah, there's not enough little. currents down here for, to cause erosion. Okay, right there, and a little tilt down. That. Uh, See that white area? Whoop. Oh. <coughs> Yeah. yeah. I'm really curious to see the area yeah. just forward of this plate. Yeah. Okay. Full wide. Alright, I think we should put in another move at this point. Okay. Yes, please. Um, Alright, what do you think for bearing on this one? Um. Hmm. <coughs> Well, if I face the wreck. Square up to it. Looks like one seven zero one seven five. So if we want to move towards the bow, we want to go two seven zero, I guess. Maybe if we want to get a little bit closer, maybe two six five. Looks like we could like do some ten meters. Yeah. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Bridge nav. Uh, ship move, please. Ten meters at bearing two six five. Thank you.
That's also good because it means we're decently getting, you know, closer to the bow, clo closer than I thought, which there's would have been a midship. So white area again. I know as soon as I zoom, I'm going to lose it. See that? Uh, sorry, Mike. I have a runaway zoom, but I'm trying to. Do you see that area I'm talking about? No. <laughs> uh, let's see if <laughs> I can you, right your, there. Use, right you mean on there. the metal? Uh, that's that appears to be a defect because of the way the light is moving when we move up and down. The shadows are changing. I don't think that's on the metal. You mean a lot? I see the line of white on top of the this the plate. right down there. Go for zoom. That you little spot. Yeah. You think that's what? Some sort of a defect. Defect. In the metal. A hole, an opening. Oh, I thought you were talking about erosion. No, I don't know what caused it, but I have a runaway zoom again. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I see. It's yeah. like through the through there. Yeah. 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 Uh, I the can't stop this zoom. Sorry. This will just zoom all the way in. Oh. That. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the, the plate's corroded. Um, yeah, Russ is saying that at the top of the screen, it looks like the deck has collapsed into a V shape, which makes sense if there was such damage here. Again, we'll, we'll know more when we get a little closer and when we go past and we can look back the other direction and see the extent of it. Dodgy coming up ahead. Yeah. I mean, just from the, the breadcrumb trail of points we've left as we've moved around with the vehicle, it does look like this part of the hull is definitely kind of smashed in from the rest. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. So it might come back out as we move towards the bow. Yeah. Do we know what this is floating in front of the camera? Is it like a jellyfish of some sort, maybe? I'm actually leaning more towards some kind of arthropod. It's a little too small to tell. And generally, if an organism is this deep, there's a lot of different little macro invertebrates in the water and the sediments. So it's hard to get a really good idea of what it looks like at that size unless you collect it and put it under a stereo microscope. But I do think, based on the movement, that it seems a little bit arthropodish, so kind of like a shrimp or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I know that we've seen um, some sea cucumbers and anemones. Anything else? Um, we've seen a couple of clear stalked sponges called bolosomids. And we've also been seeing, in the distance, these skinny eel-like fish that are white swimming in the distance every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But we haven't gotten a close-up zoom on that yet, so we don't know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sebastian. Hmm. Yeah, not to take away any way from the, the detailed archaeological surveys that we're performing here, but one of the interesting side uh, investigations of these is that these shipwrecks are, in essence, giant settling plates. 
Uh, so they are substrate that have been there for exactly 81 years. And uh, they give us a, a, a chance of understanding what grows there, how things settle, how th past things grow. And on this expedition, we have now basically three replicates, which is also unheard of uh, at depths below 5,000 meters. Uh, they provide some insights about how quickly things colonize the deep sea and how quickly things grow. Uh, for the vast majority of the deep sea, we don't know these numbers for deep sea organisms. We know that in general, deep sea species grow much, much slower and they reproduce much slower than those their, their shallow water counterparts. And so this is also going to provide some insights about uh, biodiversity and uh, life history traits of, of deep sea organisms where we know virtually nothing about. Interesting point, Daniel. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it that way, but it makes totally sense. John, what are we looking at here with this? Can you zoom, Jake? Yeah. Can I zoom? Yep, go for it. Go for zoom. <clears throat> that is a strange looking object, huh? Is it, a, it looks like it's a support that's been bent from before. Or a, yeah, or a bracket of some sort. It's like, pretty big. Look at that. Yeah. And is that. It almost looks like ventilation. Yeah, yeah. like a duct of some yeah. sort. Coming out. There's that. I figure Jim will have a revelation in like three months and let us know. We should probably put in another move. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, we can almost lateral, but we can move a little bit closer too. You want to keep that same two six five bearing? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Uh, fifteen meters, ten. Let's do fifteen. Jake, you comfortable with that? Yep, comfortable with that. Bridge nav. Jake's bouncing up there. <laughs> Let's do a ship move. 15 meters, bearing 265. Thank you. Peek here while we're hanging out. Yeah, go for zoom. There is a uh, round object bottom right. Oh, that was fun. So what's interesting is that those lines don't have any anemones on them, like every other line we've seen. You're right. I'm there. trying. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to see if there's any rusticles maybe growing on that rope that might be prohibiting them from growing on it. Yeah. yeah it's something hanging down in the water column coming up to straight ahead. It's not yep. sticking up, though. It's hanging down. Think so. I know those anemones oh, like, like no, their I view. See. You see, you mean like a plate, Ed? Yeah. Yeah, there's like a plate coming off the wreck. Yep. yep. I'm just... We'll get to it. Mainly focus on hazards. Yeah, we see that in the side scan sonar image, actually. Oh, I've been turned around. I've been looking at the wrong end on the <laughs> sonar image. 
Good thing I didn't say did, that on, did, on, uh, did it still on SPL, eh? You did. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, fish. Funny thing is that it still seemed to line up. No. Um, yeah, I think we're up here now. Yeah, gotcha. All right, some biology. Yeah. Look at this. That's a fish. Macriurid. Can we zoom in on that for Sebastian? Are you serious? Can try. I'm going to take <laughs> a guess. Macriurid. <laughs> This is just blind luck. I'm just going to turn right here and see if we get it. He's going to zoom in on the sediments instead for Hannah. Nope. <laughs> nope. Swimming away. Yeah, it's alright. We tried. Hey, we got a couple decent shots, I think, on my end at that. Okay. Close enough to hopefully make an ID. But Good. thank you guys so much. There's no need. I already identified it, Sebastian. <laughs> hey, what is it, a paint can? <laughs> <laughs> the paint can fish. <laughs> Just push the enhance button. Oh. A little levity does help on these long missions. Yeah. It's useful to keep us focused, actually, as well. It's going to make the, uh, the next series of four-hour shifts seem real fast. Piece of cake. <laughs> right. What have y'all been doing to help stay awake? Like just drinking coffee, taking breaks, eating? Well, I typically have to pee every one to two hours anyway, so that helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it really hasn't been that hard. I mean, I, I'm so interested in seeing what's, you know, what the next move of the ROV right. will bring. It's It's been kind of, I mean, slower than usual, but that's okay. It just draws out the tension. But it's a good point. I mean, I think you lose track of the time as we're moving along here and looking at this because we're seeing things that haven't been seen before. It's compelling. It's a very powerful human story. It's only afterwards you realize how, how, how tired you are. Right. On the ship, you know, some of us have lost track of time and lost track of days. Yeah. I mean, but Hans and I have been on watch for 15 hours, so that's fun. Oh. It's all possible guys, we don't want to get too creased in the decisional here. We just passed over something that looked like a riveted piece of aluminum, some of us, on the left. Uh, Sorry, it looks like a what, Jim? It's like a white rectangle, looks like a... Riveted aluminum? Yeah, this piece that, down here, that, there, bottom of the frame, uh, you have about a seven second delay from us. Yeah. Yeah. I can try and come in. Raw. Yeah. Raw. I hope it is two points. I don't see the white corrosion we, we thought was associated with aluminum. And I see the dark sediment associated with steel pieces we've seen in the sand. But uh, that's an opinion. pattern is interesting, but there's no corrosion. But look at the aluminum corrosion. Oh, is that what's that thing? Mm -hmm. Are we just saying the piece on the left or this uh, rectangular piece in the center? Okay. So, 
Once you lose the connection, it's hard to come on, pop out. out. See where we are in relation okay. to that thing off to our right. Yep. I guess we haven't moved that far. Yeah, no, that's definitely documented. Yeah, so that's the issue we have. If you don't get the footage, you know, Call in another one? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Same. 15 meters, uh, 265. Maybe 275. Two, two yeah. Because like, it's coming, the structure's coming out. Yeah, close. and we're, we're close enough now. Yeah. Roger that. This other piece just seems like more uh, hull plating that has fallen off as it landed, probably. Bridge, nav. Uh, ship move, please. One five meters, bearing two seven five. Thank you. Your camera mid for a second. I think as we're moving forward here, I'm definitely seeing the lower hull. But some of this stuff is also looking to me to be the structure that was above that's fragmented and fallen. That, that bigger piece of
John, we understand completely. Thank you very much. You have made a, a substantive and much appreciated contribution. And uh, it's not our intention, actually, as we move forward on analyzing all this, to let you off the hook at all. <laughs> so we look forward to further discussions as we process all of this, and to Tony as well. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with you both. And thank you for that comment. Yes, uh, we are still in early discussions on what follows with this in terms of writing all of this stuff and dealing with it, uh, but we will be in touch. Thank you so much, and safe drive tomorrow. are liking that bearing we can keep going with it yeah i'm, I'm actually a little I, I was uh paying attention to the chat for a sec and i are we facing um like out into that the hull that came back or are we looking at the wreck oh no we're looking okay i see where we are we're looking at the wreck yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's just we've got like a mess <laughs> yeah it's yeah. pretty jumbled <laughs> yeah right okay yeah all right no that's good that's cool yeah uh, we can continue uh, lateraling to the right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Jake's giving us a nice kind of big picture overview with the sonar with 30 meter uh, rings of red there. Yeah, that's super helpful. Actually, that makes that other piece look even larger, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it looks like, and we're getting really close to the yeah, bow. We're only that's, about 40 meters to the bow, maybe. That's 50, really nice to see. Yeah. 40, 50. <clears throat> Thanks, Jake. That was helpful. Yep. Bridge nav. Uh, can we do a move 15 meters bearing 275? Thank you.
That looks like a big uh, cannon of some sort. Yeah, that, oh yeah, that that's gun. a yeah. no. That's a uh, wait. Is that a casemate gun? All the way up here? I don't think they have them. But it's like bigger it than does twenty look, millimeter. It does look like a casemate gun, doesn't it? Stand by. No. Strange, there weren't casemate guns on this side. <sighs> Jim, any thoughts on that? It's the it's the it looks like the size of the casemate gun. It certainly does. What we're scratching our heads over is um, we're not seeing it on the plans. Yeah, there weren't any we've on the all, And we're, we're, but we've seen other things that weren't necessarily on the plans. Yeah. Huh. I can't imagine this thing, yeah, would have been massively displayed. It's never too late to update the as-built. Yeah. Yeah. That was unexpected. Yeah. Just gonna do a quick pan to starboard. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That looks like conditioning for a while, don't you know? Some sort of yeah. Thank you. What would you like? To, uh, I'd like to drop a point here. What would you like to call this? <laughs> uh, gun. Eight inch gun. <laughs> Forward gun. Okay. They had. Uh, it looks about right. Yeah, they had anti-aircraft gun, but they were up higher and they were double barrels. Yeah. No. This is this is a, a, whoever called it like the casemate gun. Yes. Is that a sh like a shot? Why is it here? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. That runs Maybe to, the gun. to turn it. To turn it, yeah. Can we go for zoom in? Yeah, is it motorized and it's turning? It looks like it's some sort of control turning mechanism. Yeah, that's geared. Yeah, that's your gears. Sorry, runaway zoom. All right, I'll give you a little. Jeez. Uh, I could just only zoom in and out right now. Sorry, I can't stop. I'm trying to make you see seconds. Zoom in on its own. I think it's full wide. I'll have to ask it. Okay. So, guys, just a reminder: when we get to the bow, we're going to want to look for the that uh, chrysanthemum crest, like we saw on Akagi. Roger. Did we jump further? In? I'm I thought we were following the rail all the way up, but now it looks like the rail is way off to our right. No, the rail's right here. Or okay. like on the rail. Is the vessel this narrow at the? Are we that far forward? This is the rail here. Yeah. Okay. What's left of it? Yeah. Actually, I don't know. Is the whole bow there? I don't know. It's not looking. It's not looking very prominent very in the sonar, is it? No. Yeah. There may not be much to see of it.
Okay. Would we like to put it in the same move again? Um, yeah, I think that'll work. Any change in direction, you think, Jake? We do seem to be getting a little over the wreck, so yeah. maybe not quite so far forward. Maybe, maybe two eight five. Step back a bit, yeah. Bridge nav. Hey, Mike. Can I borrow that? Very large top left monitor for a couple of minutes. Bridge now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, can we do a ship move one five meters bearing two eight five? Thank you. a better shot of all those gears or that shaft. There doesn't seem to be a turret around this or we're inside it or something. Yeah, it looks just like the, uh, oh, that, yeah, no, uh, it's just weird. Do a little push here. You want to stay wide to. You can go push. Okay. So I can get it to stop. Nope. Oh, how about a full zoom? <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah, that's worthless. Maybe I can pull out slow and stop. Yeah. I was able to stop that. All right. <clears throat> you come right. full wide. Yep. I think I'm coming up on this. Uh, yeah. All uh, right here. Some whitish light object to your left. Yeah, I think it it may just be debris where the bow was. It just seems to end right there. Yeah. So you may have already mentioned this, um, but were there any torpedoes fired near the bow? I mean, they didn't. We don't really know for sure where they hit. Um, two were fired by the same destroyer, so I'd have expected them in the same place. It's possible that the, the, the spot we saw earlier wasn't torpedo, and that both torpedoes struck below where we can see. Um, but yeah, not really sure. <laughs> 